welcome to another beautiful night here we have in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, clear skies all night tonight and even tomorrow night. So we're going to be doing a two night shoot and I'm just going to capture for the most part tonight's imaging run. So again, we have the Explore Scientific out with a uh, monochrome camera and we're going to be doing narrowband imaging. That's going to be using our hydrogen and oxygen and sulfur filters and we're going to be looking primarily in that direction there. So see what we have coming up. The main thing that we're going to be imaging tonight is the Tulip Nebula, but even more than that is the object that's right next to it. So a lot of people don't actually know this, but there's actually a black hole that was discovered back in the 70s. And in these images that people are taking, you're able to actually see the jet that is being emitted from this black hole around the Tulip Nebula. So I have every intention of trying to capture that tonight and again tomorrow night with those narrowband filters. We're going to be shooting 10 minute long exposures that should capture the faintest of possible light that is going to be ejected from that area, but also just that exists in Cygnus. The Tulip Nebula is an emission nebula that does have hydrogen and oxygen and sulfur. So we're going to capture some great details of that area all the way through. And I'm really excited about it. It's actually my first time ever shooting this particular nebula. So what is so fascinating about this black hole is there's been a lot of activity and a lot of studies that have gone into trying to figure out exactly what it is. One of the amazing facts about this is it's event horizon or the point of no return for material falling towards the black hole is spinning around at more than 800 times per second. The way the event horizon is defined is it's the black hole's so-called surface, which defines the boundary where the velocity needed to escape this exceeds the speed of light, which is, of course, the speed limit of the cosmos. Matter and radiation will fall in, but they simply cannot get back out. And that's why black holes are simply invisible to us. One of the amazing parts of this particular black hole is there's actually two stars. One that was 40 times larger than our own sun and emits light almost 300,000 times brighter than our sun. This black hole is known as Cygnus X1. Now what's in truly incredible about these star pairs is they rotate around each other once every 5.6 days on Earth, which is incredibly fast. As a result of this gravitational dance that they're locked into, the blue supergiant is almost deformed in an egg shape as it spins around this black hole. And as it does, part of that star actually gets sucked into that black hole. Once that gas is sucked away from the blue supergiant, a flat accretion disk then begins to encircle the black hole, much like we've seen in that movie Interstellar with Matthew McConaughey. What's also incredible about this is that friction actually heats this gas to more than a billion degrees, causing it to emit torrent-like x-rays. And therefore, if there were any life within potentially millions of miles, it would be incinerated immediately. Tulip Nebula is an interstellar cloud of gas and dust in the constellation of Cygnus. This emission nebula is also cataloged as SH2-101, or Sharpless, for the SH2 catalog. The Tulip Nebula is roughly 8,000 light years away, which means the black hole that we're looking at is nearly 800 light years closer than the Tulip Nebula. Its size is nearly 70 light years across. This beautiful, incredible area of Cygnus will be what we're going to be imaging tonight. And again, I've never actually captured this for myself. So this will be a first even for me. So I'm happy to be sharing that with you guys. So again, tonight we're going to be using a dedicated monochrome astrophotography camera. What does that actually mean? Some people will use DSLR cameras that take pictures of people, places, and things, right? But these astro cameras have coolers on the back of them. How does that actually play into effect? Well, your DSLR can't take a 10 minute long exposure without the sensor really getting hot. 
these cameras can do this over and over and over again all night. I'll actually operate my camera tonight at about minus five degrees Celsius, which means at no point is that sensor ever going to get very hot. You know, it's actually almost comical. When I post some of these things on, on social medias, uh, I get people that say that these images are fake and that they're NASA Hubble Space Telescope images that I'm pawning somehow a image that anybody could get offline as my own, but I'll challenge each and every one of you. If you can find any of the images that I claim that are mine on NASA's website, other than my NASA APOD, I'll give you $10. It has to be like for like though. Good luck, you're not gonna find it. But by all means, feel free to start looking. These images 100% are my own. I take hours and hours, days worth of data, and I compress all of this at the end of my sessions into a single photo. So make sure you stick around. We're gonna get this started here in just a little bit. I'm gonna get everything powered on, get it all planned, and we'll start imaging that nebula here in just a couple of hours. Right now it's about 7.15, so it's obviously way too light to really do much of anything other than just get it ready and turned on. Thank you. 